Hello! Today I am here to talk about the Women in Translation Readathon, which is happening later this month, August 25th to 31st. It is being hosted by Matthew Sharapa, Jennifer Over at Insert Literary Pun Here, and Kendra Winchester. It is a fabulous readathon that is intended to celebrate women in translation. Because women are underrepresented in publishing, translated works are underrepresented in publishing too, so women in translation, definitely underrepresented. Um, and let's just to highlight that and the work that translators do to bring these stories to English audiences and appreciating and respecting these stories and being able to celebrate them. So I'm really excited to participate. I've, I had it marked down as a thing I wanted to do since last August, so I was thrilled to see that they are doing a readathon, and I have wanted to participate for the entire month of August. Um, I've really been wanting to read works in translation and like, be present in, in promoting this stuff here on BookTube, but I just haven't had the time or the space physically or mentally so I'm really excited to like be back into the video making game and to promote this readathon so there are some challenges um, I do not know how much I'll actually be able to read because this is also the same week that I begin classes and I'm only taking three classes and they're all only one day a week so in my brain that means I will have lots of free time but I know that's not how grad school works so I cannot fully commit to reading all of these. Um, hopefully I'll get through at least a couple and really push hard, but I wanted to share what I am planning on reading, or at least in my, my dream I would read all of these during the next week. There are challenges and these do fulfill some of the challenges, so I'm not really sure if I'm going to be able to actually fulfill all of the challenges during the week, but I will highlight the ones that do fulfill challenges. Um, starting with this one, which is Cheese Sweet Home Part 1. It's the first in a collection of Cheese Sweet Home manga. Um, this fulfills the challenge to read something that is not a novel, and this is not. It is it is manga. This is by Konami Kanata, and it is translated by Ed Chavez. This is a book that I received for Christmas a couple of Christmases ago from my sister. She saw it and thought of me, which is really sweet, and I really wanted to read it since then, but I just haven't made the time for it, so I'm making the time now. Um, it is, not only is it manga, but it's full color manga, which doesn't happen very often, and it's all the more exciting for that, and the fact that it is about cats. That's pretty much the plot. I think it's about the life and the mischief of a kitten. So I am here for that and really excited to get to this one. And I think it'll provide some much needed levity because basically everything else that I have, I think will be quite heavy. Next is a book that pretty much everyone on the internet seems to read except for me, but I'm really excited to finally get to it. And it is Human Acts by Han Kong. This of course was translated by Deborah Smith. I think it is less popular than The Vegetarian, but I know that people who really enjoy The Vegetarian often go on to read Human Acts and vice versa. Um, and I know that there are people who enjoy Human Acts much more than The Vegetarian. Um, so I'm eager to see where I fall because I quite enjoyed The Vegetarian. So I'm eager to see what this is about because um, I don't actually really know much plot-wise. I know it takes place in the 1980s and it is uh, kind of, it follows multiple characters surrounding the aftermath of the student riots in South Korea. But other than that, I'm not really sure and I'm kind of wanted to leave it this way. Uh, I love the cover. I think it's haunting and really beautiful, and I'm eager to see what I make of Hong Kong's other works. Next is The Girl Who Wrote Loneliness by Kyung Suk Shin. I read her book uh, Please Look After Mom earlier this year and really, really enjoyed it, and I've been eager to pick up more of her works since, but my library only carries Please Look After Mom, so I haven't been able to get my hands on anything, so when I saw this on Book Outlet, had to buy it, really excited about it. I know that Matthew Sharapa loves this book. This was translated by Ha Yu Jung. I know that this is a novel about a young woman in South Korea who is working in a factory. Um, I don't know much more than that because again I've kind of kept myself away from any plot summaries, but if it's anything like the melancholy and beauty that was Please, after, please Look After Mom, I think I would really really enjoy this one. Um, and it does fulfill the challenge of reading a book that has read on the cover. Next is, a, is an arc that I was sent a really long time ago and I feel guilty of course for not having read it yet, and it is Soviet Milk by Nora Ekstena, translated by Margita Galidis. This was sent to me by Perrin Press. Like I said, it's a beautiful arc. French laps on an arc. Who knew? Um, gorgeously produced. Really excited to get to it. I know that it is about a woman in Latvia during Soviet rule, and that's pretty much all I, I know about it. Um, I'm going to assume, based on the title, that it involves milk, motherhood, those sorts of themes as well. And Eric 
over at the Lonesome Reader. He read and reviewed this. It was a really fun review because he also baked during the review and shared a recipe. So that was a fun, that was a really fun take on this review. Um, he really enjoyed it and even recently recommended it um, in his video for Women in Translation Month, which reminded me that I still had this book and had yet to read it. So I really, really want to get to this one this month. And this would also fulfill a challenge to read a book that has read on the cover. And this fulfills a challenge to read a text translated from a language that you haven't read a text translated from before. So. That's a bonus. This also fulfills that challenge. This is A Spare Life by Lydia Dimkowska. This was translated by Christina E. Kramer, and the author is from Macedonia. So I've never read anything from Macedonia either, as far as I know. Um, and this is a story that also takes place during Soviet rule um, in the former Yugoslavia. And it is about a set of conjoined twins. And I know that it involves them potentially getting separation surgery. And I think that, and I also, if I remember correctly, they are conjoined at the head. So it sounds like a really interesting premise. Um, I saw this when I was at Powell's last August, so I've had this for a year now, um, and it, they had a Women in Translation Month Bay display, and this one in particular caught my eye um, when I read the description in the first sentences, and I was really intrigued by it. And it's one that I've never heard anyone else talk about before, so I'd really like to, to not only share this book and promote it, but also to have an opinion on it and, and how I feel about it. It is quite hefty in terms of size, and I'm assuming also in terms of content. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get through this one in, in just a week's time, but I really hope to because it's been on my shelves for so long, and I'm so intrigued. And this not only fulfills the challenge to read a text translated from a language I've never read from before, but also it is a book about childhood. And last on my personal list is Half a Lifelong Romance by Eileen Chang, which was translated by... Karen S. Kingsbury. I've heard really great things about this novel and this author from Matthew, Claire, and my mom, so I'm really eager to get to this one. Um, I know that this is a like a modern Chinese classic. This was published in 1969 in China. Um, and yeah, like I said, I've heard great things. Um, it also fills a challenge of reading a book that has read on the cover. Um, and I do not remember any particulars about the plot because I tend to like to forget those sorts of things and to go into books as blind as possible. So I can't tell you exactly what it's about, but the, the people that I've heard praise from are enough to make me want to pick this up. Um, and it's also a relatively recent acquisition that I don't want to languish on my shelves for too long. Um, so these are what I'm hoping to tackle. This is what I'll be drawing from during that week. And I may even start dipping into it sooner because I've made myself so excited about them all. Um, so I'd love to hear if you're participating in the challenge, what you think about any of these books. Um, I would love to hear if you enjoyed them and what you enjoyed about them. Um, and other recommendations, of course, for women in translation are always welcome. And definitely be sure to check out the videos created by the, the hosts of the Readathon. I will have everything linked down below in case you are interested in checking any of that out. I am really looking forward to participating. Thank you so much to the hosts. And that's it for me. So um, other than that, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.